How do deposits work when you're buying a house? Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb with the REN Network, and today we're here with Jason Bonarigo of RMS Mortgage talking about how a buyer's deposit works, when it happens, and what's happening with that deposit throughout the transaction. So, Jeff, you tell me. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not quite sure, actually. You're, you're, well, we get these questions all the time, I mean, in regards to when we're bringing up financing and when I'm right. talking to folks during the pre-approval when their offer is accepted. So, actually, in this case, I'd love to flip it back well, to you. And, deposits and are definitely me. So, essentially, you have, first off, deposits are always negotiable. I right. think that that's the most important thing. Sometimes um, they don't know that. Well, that's a right. lot of real estate agents don't even know this. Well, the standard deposit is 5%. Wait, 5% and 1000 No, yeah. that is, I mean, if you're putting down 3%, you're not going to put 5% down in a deposit. Can't so, have it. Or if it's a VA loan, right? right. Good, point. Good point. Deposits are completely negotiable. Mm -hmm. I will say, on average, most times, if deposit is 5%. If sure. you're putting down 10% or 20%, right, you're going to see that 5%. Does, the, that does the buyer do that right at the offer, Jeff, or does that come later? They don't. That, so so the deposit, generally speaking, again, uh, I, we're working with a situation where the deposit is going to come three times. But generally speaking, it's initially in order to bind the offer. Generally, we see that being $1,000. Okay. That means I'm, I'm trying to buy a house. I'm putting a bid in to buy a house and to secure that. It's usually right. like that. In order for it to go under, okay. truly under agreement, gotcha. we need consideration. So, you know, we give them, in this case, let's just say a $1,000 check. Um, perfect. That's going to go in escrow. Yep. And then we're going to the move on into our home will. inspections. Gotcha. Right. Yep. So I always kind of refer to that as asking to go out on a date, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, let's go out on the date. You know, right. now I've given, you know, some... some Test you know, in the water. Right, here. exactly. And, and we've gotten a deposit down and... And now we're going to do the home inspections. Do, do our due diligence of on one another. To do see, I really want to buy this Do house? we want to go through with this relationship? And whatever comes with it. Yes. Yeah. Right. So the next step is the purchase and sale agreement. And that's when the balance of the deposit really comes. So if this case, say, you know, the deposit was $25,000, 5% of $500,000. Now we're talking purchase, significant money. Right. Here. Right. We've given $1,000 already. So that means $24,000 is what we're going to be giving at the purchase and sale agreement. And that's agreement. usually after the home inspection. And right? that is normally after the home inspection. And I, I call this the engagement ring. That's when you're really moving forward. This is right. We're, we're, we're doing this. The yeah. engagement right. ring is when it's gotten really serious. If we were to break this off after this, yeah. there's going to be some serious there's consequences. Some serious right? Bad right? Blood. So, yeah. right. so we've right. gone on the date. We've got. And all kidding aside, I do tell the clients the same thing. This is when you're buying the house, right? You're really, really at the offer stage. You know, you're kicking the tires. You're figuring it out. We hope you. But this, I mean, you're putting down twenty thousand dollars or more. You're buying the house, right? Right. right. This exactly. is what we're doing. And and it's important to understand that from a seller's perspective, what is the deposit? The deposit's really to ensure that the buyer performs. It's holding their feet to the fire that they're actually going to perform and actually get to the closing right. table. Right. Um, and one of the, well, one of the things that we we get too is you know is that money up for grabs now? Do I lose that money? Can I get that money back? Sometimes buyers ask me that. They ask right. you that. And yeah, and which, I is, show which is, is a great question. That and it ties into me, but you know, it depends on the situation. Depends right. Depends on the situation. So I, I and think the financing. It's, right. it's most important to know that the seller does hold that deposit, the, not the actual seller in their bank account, but a seller representative, whether, like, whether it be an attorney. We call an escrow deposit. Or, Right, the escrow yeah. agent, whether it be the seller's attorney or the seller's uh, brokerage, holds sure. that deposit, yep. right? Yep. And and that money's deposited in, in that escrow account. And there's only two ways that that money can be released. One way, well, I should say three ways. Um, one way is if we close on the property. Yeah. Right. And then it goes. <laughs> that's the through, preferred way. Right. right. That, that is the preferred <laughs> way. Right. So that's that's way one. Yeah. Um, the second way is if both buyer and seller agree. So hey, you know, we gave the thousand dollars and. We're not going to go forward because of the home inspection issues. Perfect. Both okay. buyer and seller are going to walk agree. away. We're fine. Yep. Right. We you know, it. there is we that understand. home inspection contingency. We don't have a chance to win this if we were to battle this out in court, which why would you ever for a thousand bucks? Right. And you're protected in that regard. Now. Right. Yep. As long as the home inspection contingency is in there. So, True. <laughs> so the third way, only other way, so we've talked about closing on the loan, buyer seller agree. Yep. The only other way is after that yep. is, if an, is if a judge says, hey, look, the buyer the money goes to the buyer. The right. money goes to the right. seller because the buyer didn't perform. Right. The seller can't just say, hey, give me that money. And the seller representative who's asked her agent can't say, well, they didn't go through with the house. Well, here's the money. Right. right. So, yep. so that's important to know that, you know, it's an escrow agent on the seller side that's holding your money. And it, it there, you know, it, you can get it back as long as the proper things are followed in the deal, like mortgage contingencies followed. Right. You know, well, I was going to say that, and that ties in so much into the lending, right? Well, that's, is, your, that's your important. That's my, you know, exactly. The, in the mortgage contingency, which we've done videos on and we can do other right. ones on too, but the importance of a mortgage contingency and a commitment date is, is massive, right. and that's a whole other argument, but but that's our job because along with as, the attorneys to protect that deposit. Right, because as a great example, it's up for risk, right? if that mortgage commitment 
if we go beyond the mortgage commitment, it's not net, and right. then you know three days later we find out that the buyer can't get the loan, tough cookies on now that deposit. We're, now, now, now we're now you have some that. legal issues, right? right. Now we're and fighting that's kind over of what that we deposit. Mean. And right. Sometimes the buyers don't understand that. So again, obviously a good agent, a good lender, a good attorney is explaining that up front to the consumer right. about how the dates work and when they're giving that five percent up and it's tied up. You know, these are the drop dead dates on your purchase and sale contract that we have to perform. Because a good team should have three people watching those dates. Like you said, the the real estate broker, yep. right, or agent, yep. the attorney, as well as the mortgage lender. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, one thing that I always am asked is, does that deposit go towards the down payment? So if I put 20, meaning the overall down payment right. on the loan, right? So say, yep. so let's go back. Yep. I bought a five hundred. Yep. I'm buying a five hundred thousand dollar house. Mm -hmm. I put twenty five thousand dollars in total deposits, and I'm putting ten percent down at fifty grand. Sure. Does that twenty five grand? Go towards it does it, it does, does. It, 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 and the thing is is that sometimes consumers don't know is that we have to track that uh in a detailed fashion so we can give them credit for that right. on the hud settlement statement as we call it or the, or the, the closing disclosure now but um so yeah we want to have we have to give them credit for it because if not we're going to ask him to document it again right. at closing so yeah so if you put twenty five thousand down at the purchase and sale and your total down payment for the loan is 50 grand then yes you're gonna have to 25 now and then obviously another 30 to 45 days later at closing you bring the additional 25. And I sometimes think, clients, I'm sorry, Jeff, yeah. sometimes clients all, I shouldn't say always, but a lot of times they think they need that entire down payment right at purchase and sale or, oh, I, well, I don't have it. I need a couple months to save or, you know, and they, they happily find out that they have some time between those next 30 to 45 days to either save the rest or get the rest or, or move it or liquidate it, you know, so they don't have to bring it to close. Right. And which is huge. And well, and, and one more thing that, that I was just kind of thinking about from a deposit standpoint is you can't, it, well, if you're getting financing, I should say, you, yep. you, you, and no escrow agents can do this, but if you come with a brown paper bag of $25,000 yeah. in cash in there. <laughs> is that good? Yeah, it, you know, it, it might be great for the guy who's taking the bag and will never come back. True. Um, True. But, you know, you're not given a cash deposit in order for a house. No. You, especially if you're going to find checks or, or obviously check. It, right. it goes back to my point of we need to track it. We right. need proof. Cash is a bad thing, buyers. Yeah. It is. It's not a bad thing to have it, but you have to season it. And that's maybe a whole other video. Right. Actually. That's a good That's a good talk, that topic, because it happens quite a lot with assets. Well, and, and, and also just from that aspect is say if mom and dad gave you a portion of the deposit. That's completely right? fine. That's completely fine. But how do we fine. do it? That's called a gift. And, right. You know, so this again, again, you have to yeah. go back and trace I think we're going to come back with so. another video on this, guys. This is too important, yeah. assets, because it's something that drives me crazy, and sometimes the clients don't don't know, and, and a lot of times what happens is we kind of reverse engineer it, and then we drive the clients crazy with paperwork. Right. Because they just didn't know ahead of time not to move that money or to move that deposit or get the gift from mom and dad early in the game. So that's a great topic, and we'll come back with that. So that's how deposits work. If you have any questions about the home buying process, let us know. We're always here to help you. Jason, how do they get a hold of you? Jason Bonarigo, RMS Mortgage. Uh, cell phone is always the best way. 617-413-5038. Just give me a call or shoot me a text. And I'm Jeff Chubb. My team, the home, Chubb Homes team, we're brokered by eXp Realty. Should you need us, the best number to get us at is 617-480-2600 or online at boston2.com. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this content, be sure to hit that subscribe button below. And uh, if you have any real estate related questions, please reach out. We're always looking for different topics to talk about. So until then, uh, enjoy your day.